Hi, welcome to Free, Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today we're going to talk about pronunciation. Pronunciation is such a forgotten feature when you're studying most English programs. If you're my student, you know that I insist so much on pronunciation and here's why, my anecdote. I have been studying formally English for a couple of years and I already felt very confident speaking the language. So I was already in the advanced phase, you know, basic, intermediate, advanced. I was in the advanced phase and there were two months of studies on phonetics. They were so interesting, but I was outraged that I had been studying for so long and they never taught me that. Like, there were special sounds and all of this world, all of these symbols, and I had been that I had been speaking incorrectly. Man, I felt terrible. It's not just bad realizing it because you know, starting to realize you start making progress. The problem was that I felt like they let me speak incorrectly for so long. And then it was so difficult to undo what it was done already. This is called facilitation. You have learned something in a way, and it's wrong. It turns out that it wasn't the book, it was book. It turns out that it wasn't it, but it. Uh, it was like nobody said anything before. Why would you do that? Well, anyways, then is that. I don't want that for you. I don't want you to be in that position. So we're talking about pronunciation today. And I was thinking about why this happens, because it's been studied. It's known that in order to speak, you need to hear. In order to write, you need to read. So the first step is listening. If you want to speak, you need to listen. Obviously, you're not going to pay a fee to hear people just saying, making nonsense, speaking in a language you don't understand. So nobody does that. Maybe someone does. You let me know. Okay, but how do you learn this? The first thing is listening. You want to speak? Do you want to speak? Listen. So you need to listen. Pay attention. Notice the way this language is spoken. If you want to speak this language, English, you need to hear the distinctive features it has. This language has very uh, distinct sounds that other languages do not have. It has a particular rhythm, I mean, it's rhythmic. It has a particular intonation, depending on the context. It has many contractions when spoken and many reductions. So when you get all of that, you get the right pronunciation of the language a natural way of speaking this language. And how do you get that? Where do you get that? Well, where would you get rhythm? The best source for rhythm is music. So if you listen to songs in English, there you will get the rhythm. In music, you can also get, and you will definitely get, all the reductions and contractions of the language. Because for music, for the rhythm, you use a lot of contractions and reductions. So with music, you will get lots of helps with rhythm, contractions, and reductions in English. But th those aren't all the features. Then with TV, movies, or sitcoms, or any program you want to watch, then you will get the samples for the intonation, as well as the contractions and the reductions. But the, uh, the more informal, what you're watching, the more contractions and reductions you'll find. Especially reductions, because contractions are very natural, but reductions are more like um, fast-paced English, more informal way of speaking, I'd say. And then you have these particular sounds. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to get these sounds in songs, in particular songs or people speaking, because all of the sounds are combined. And maybe that is why it might seem like the most difficult part because we don't, if, if you're not a native speaker of English, you don't know these sounds. So these particular sounds need to be studied. And to be understood better, some amazing people have created phonetic symbols that help 
incredibly. So, so those are the three main sources. So when you have the sources now, how do you do it? Step by step, no rushing here, remember. First, noticing, just knowing, first just knowing that this is a different language that we don't understand, that there are different sounds, that it's, that it's a different way of speaking. Start paying attention, I'll say it again. So you have there your movie and maybe you've seen it, but you never heard what people were saying. Maybe you even saw it in English, but you didn't hear because you were just reading the subtitles. Not saying the subtitles are bad. Subtitles have helped me. If you can do it without subtitles, good for you. But subtitles do help you associate the sound, even if it's in the same language or, or the translation. They are both helpful, very helpful. First, you need to pay attention. After you start paying attention, you will start seeing, noticing some differences. Some, you're going to pick some sounds. You're going to start picking some sounds. And that is it. That's all you have to do. Listen, but listen actively. Listen actively. Then you will start practicing. After you have heard, then you can repeat. It's not listen and repeat. It's actually listen, 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 and repeat. After a lot of listening, you'll start repeating. And the first time you are trying, well, repeating, it's not going to sound the same, but you're going to start trying. And then you continue practicing and practicing and practicing. And once you get there, you don't just stop. You need to continue practicing because if not, your tongue will forget all about it. All of your mouth is going to forget how to make the sound if you don't keep practicing. That's how you learn pronunciation. So there's a lot of listening into it. So if you think you're ready to start improving your pronunciation, I'll give you some places where you can start. Where can you start? My favorite YouTube channel, Rachel's English. Rachel shows you how to pronounce every single sound. She has mini courses. She has lots of material. Don't feel overwhelmed. Start with the single sounds. Start with single sounds and then move on. And she has lots of playlists, so you can just go there and have fun. You can spend your life watching the videos. And there, I'll send you some links also. There's this page that shows you the symbols, the sounds, examples a lot more examples on how you could associate also the the word the letter combinations with the sounds especially the vowels because that might because there are crazy combinations in english let's face it well one important thing to to learn is the international phonetic alphabet it has all of the sounds for all the spoken languages or most probably spoken languages and they're adapted symbols for English. So when you uh, look at, look for a word in a dictionary, for example, you will see some symbols there. And maybe in one dictionary you see one symbol, in another dictionary you'll see another symbol. So every dictionary has a guide to, to a good examples of which sound is which. But, well, internet helps a lot because you have the dictionary, you have the pronunciation, but you will also have the symbols, the phonetic symbols, so you can start using them. On another video, we will learn how to use a dictionary. Your dictionary, your best friend. Don't forget it. There's always room for improvement. Remember, I'm improving also. I still have problems with pronunciation. I know. And I'm still studying too. So just keep studying. Just find the way you will enjoy it the most. If you enjoy music, well, then with music. Look for the lyrics of the song. Learn there. If you like TV, Netflix, ooh, it's a great source. But Netflix and music are great sources once you pay attention to them. So that's the key, paying attention. If you need individual sounds, there are also sources for those individual sounds that you need to learn and practice. Most importantly, learn and practice, 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 and practice. There's lots of repetition here. Thank you for watching. 
subscribe, and hopefully see you soon.